please welcome Jacob Corrales of CodeCentric. So hey, my name is Jacob, I'm for an IT consulting at Concentric and I'm gonna talk about logging pipelines with FluentD and Kubernetes. So the default way to do log forwarding in Kubernetes is you deploy FluentD as a daemon set, so it's once on every node. Since Kubernetes writes uh, logs to disk, um, FluentD then, then can pick up these um, logs from the disk. Um, you can use the filter plugin to enrich some metadata like namespace and port, etc., and then route to one or a couple of endpoints. This is fine if you're in a single cluster with one team, but but um, if you have a cluster with multiple teams, for example, like 20 teams, and everyone shares the global config of Fluent D, this can be quite a problem because you have a coordination problem. If every team updates one part of the config, the whole daemon set has to be redeployed till 1.6. This was also really ugly. So overall, if you have a shared cluster, this can be really um, gets complicated quickly. So there are the common solutions for this. The first solution is to put like an extra FluentD or log stash in front of it. Um, this makes the logging or the coordination problem still there. It's still there, but it makes it a bit better. Um, but then you have extra piece of infrastructure in front of it, um, which is just extra overhead. The second common solution is like let every team roll their own solution, which is fine for the developers because then they have a yeah, huge kind of flexibility, they can do whatever they want, but on the downside, um, you waste a lot of resource and especially manpower since everyone has to reinvent the wheel on its own. And the third um, solution, which I'm like voting for today or presenting today, is like let developers define their logging targets and parsing patterns in attributes and then dynamically generate the Fluent D config from these attributes so the attribute uh, developers have like huge, huge flexibility. Um, yeah. So how to do that? Um, basically, um, you first need to get the developers to define their logging attributes, like where they want to log, if they want to elastic search or something else, and their parsing patterns in the, inside their deployment or pod specification. Then you need to create uh, some kind of templated Fluent D config. Um, then you need to read the annotations from the API and generate um, the full config with the template and the data and then reload the Fluentd config. Um, for example, here on the right you can see an example pod spec where you put like the Fluentd target where the outputs of these pods should be routed to, in this case uh, like an Elasticsearch instance or something else. And then you create a templated Fluentd config. In this case, I use Golang template language where you um, loop over every port, look for the targets annotations, filter some information out like container ID, and then just build the Fluentd config from out of that component. Um, pretty stra straightforward. And then you need to just glue these two things together. For that, I use kubegain, which is basically a Golang tool which watches the AP, API of the server, um, looks for changes. If changes triggers um, the rendering process of the template, and then triggers, uh, in this case here, TD agent reload, which is the treasure, a uh, treasure data distribution of Fluentd, and that um, reloads the Fluentd config. So in final, the output of the previous looks like that, and you can see at the bottom the Elasticsearch um, stuff has been put in there. So that's basically it. Um, you can find it all on GitHub because it's a little bit, little bit faster to all thing. Um, I hope somebody learns it because I think it's a really useful pattern for developers and operators because it um, lets the developers um, define their logging um, constructs at their de deployment definitions and they can make use of the whole Fluentd ecosystem and not just like statically route everything to Elasticsearch or something. And the operators get more free time because you don't have to change the config for every 
um, team which wants to do another parsing point or something. Um, you can also do this with speed, and basically that is. Thank you.